Good morning, Dr. Bob O. Oh, coming to you from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Well, this is uh, the bedroom, and Jenny's uh, doing her quiet time outside. Uh, so I just try to create this place look more like a studio. I don't know if it's going to work. At least outside, oh my lord, they were K or the karaoke bar next to our hotel, literally, or playing the music all night. I st it's still going on so loud, so I cannot even record outside, which would be nice early in the morning. But So, well, let's pray. Holy Spirit God, we thank you, we praise you, give you glory. Give us insight today that we could live by today, Lord God. We give you praise and worship in advance, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're continuing on January 29, 2021. Fearing God, Whew. that's the key word today, because we've experienced great power that was demonstrated at the gate beautiful, remember, that 40-year-old man who was lamed at birth, and the grace of God, great grace was manifesting at the church, and so now it's time for the great power, grace, and fear of God to come up on the church, and I, I think there's some missing ingredient for church today. Do anybody fear the church or make fun? Wow, think about that as I read. Um, because too much, um, and this is something I just wrote years ago, too little grace, if there's no grace, a little bit of, too little of grace, then it becomes legalism. We become legalistic. But too much grace, then we become liberalism. Universal, universalist. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. All grace. Yeah, let's ordain practicing homosexual as pastor. Yeah, it's about grace. No, too little fear, then we become liberalism. <laughs> too much fear, then it becomes legalism again. So now, how do we really balance that? How do we exp learn from this description of this God's magni magnificent power and that bring fear on the people? But how do we balance that? So we'll become a healthy church. This is the word of the Lord from chapter 5, verse 1. And continue as I read. But a certain man named Ananias, in Hebrew, which means God is gracious, with Sapphira, in Aramaic, which means beautiful, his wife sold a possession, the land. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. It's interesting. Ananias means what? Grace. God is gracious. <laughs> right? And Sapphira means beautiful. Right? And so Ananias actually literally means holy. Holy man and beautiful woman. What a combination. Right? Now, this is in the context of the verses before. Now, when this was written, Acts, Luke did not break it into chapter 5, verse 1. No, it was done later. So it was just continuous writing. What, what did we just learn yesterday? There's a guy named Barnabas, right? That he sold his land and gave everything to him, and to the church. And he even had a nickname. By this time, he had met son of encouragement, right? Barnabas. Barnabas, the son of encouragement. Wow. He has a great nickname. Everybody's, oh yeah, it's a son of encouragement. Oh yeah. The Lord got around, right? And that's the context. And if you understand that, then then it unlocks the mystery of why God had to kill these people. <laughs> right? Uh, God is gracious. Or, or uh, it says, holy man, married to a beautiful wife, right? And then he said they took part of the proceeds. Now how much is a part? 5%? 10%? You know, oh, sold the land for 100,000 and just kept, you know, 10,000. Or it's just 5,000. Oh, yeah, it's just, and, and I have to give it all. He gave it as if he gave the entire amount to the church. Let's say, so the sake of simplicity, let's say the land cost, land worth 100,000, he sold it for 100,000, and Calvin, Yes, 
Calvin in, in, in his commentary said, the word part in the context in which it was written, original language, it's about 50%. So it wasn't like 5% or 10%. It was like he kept most, I mean, it's just like as much. And as he's giving, and his wife knew that half was safe, but they were offering it to church like it's, it's everything, just like Barnabas. Maybe he'll get a nickname, become famous. But instead, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and kept back part of the price of the land for yourself? While he remains, was it not yours own? And after he was sold, was it not your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. He lied to God. Right? Why did Mr. God is gracious, holy man, and Mrs. Beautiful do that? Right? What fault? Right? I always joke around. Uh, my, my, <laughs> my favorite fault place, fault tasty, in Cerritos. Oh, I wish we could have fault today. Uh, the waiter said, what for? <laughs> what for? <laughs> what for? All right? What for? It was all yours before. Why would you do that? It's like oxymoron. It's quite stupid. It was your property. It was yours. When you sold it, all the money was yours. But why did you lie about the percentage? Now, this is an anatomy of sin of Ananias and Sapphira. So the first layer, as you do, cut through the, 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 the sin of Ananias and Sapphira, it's just surface layer. It's sin of lying. I mean, Peter says it. Why did you lie? Why did you lie? Right? Sin of lying. That's the first layer. Some wise old man said, sin has many tools. But a lie is a handle which fits them all. <laughs> I like that. Sin has many tools, but a lie is a handle which fits them all. There are two kinds of lying. One, about action. No, mom, I did not eat that cookies from the cookie jar. Remember little kid? <laughs> With chocolate and all the cookie crumbs. Mom, I did not eat the cookies. Sin, lying of action. What, what about lying of being? Mom, I'm not a liar. <laughs> same, same thing. Whether it's being or doing, lying always give birth to a bigger lie. You cannot stop at one line. It's like, oh, why weren't you at work yesterday? Oh, my uncle passed away. <laughs> and then uh, your, your uncle calls, Oh, no, that was the other uncle, my mother's side, and go on and on, and you probably have to kill off many of your relatives to get excuse from a simple thing, not coming to work, right? Um, it was sin of lying about who they are in Christ. Ananias and Sapphira watching Barnabas, and observe what he did with his land and really becomes someone prominent. He said, you know what? Let's do the same. That's not who they are. And you know, sometimes I, I observe last 40 years of my Christian journey. Sometimes when I observe husband and wife, they're just like one accord and they, they just do it. They're, it's not the same spirit of God's spirit, but same spirit of like, they're one accord completely and they don't really help each other. Sometimes having the balance of um, your wife telling you and making observation about stuff that, that you're doing that's not correct. I mean, guys, men, husbands, you don't want that, right? You don't want those things pointed out. You want to keep our, your relationship shallow and happy, I know. But sometimes you need someone not fully agreeing with you and whatever you said goes and because I've actually seen many cases where a couple like that, they could have really went really deeper and, and become greater 
in their journey, but they, they act like they are so spiritual, and they, they seem like they are spiritual giants or something, but so shallow and so selfish, and it's all about them. And so, yeah, that, that to me, sin of lying about self, that's something that I need to praise. Like, you're not all bad, right? We're just, we're just, we're nobody, we're nothing before God. But in God's presence, they were somebody. Sin and they sin against God. But then the second layer of the sin is sin of competition. Right? I mean, as I told you already, how did this come about? Well, Brother Barnabas, right? this prominent Christian leader. The, what is the root of the sin of this competition? Then? So why are you competing? Well, the third layer is the sin of comparison. You compare. Please do not compare. Actually, I wrote a poem in Korean about uh, the prayer that, Lord, let me not compare it. Well, I wrote in Korean, but I translate. I know all translation of poetry is treason, but, well, bear with me. It's prayer. Prayer. I was happy when I compare not. Lord, my heart yearns that place of non-comparing with what I have this time, this itself with them that I may be satisfied, I pray. Lord, I was happy when I compare not. Wow. Well, do not compare this with T.S. Eliot's poem, but uh, that's my confession, my prayer, that, that the sin of comparison will not come into my life. I mean, why do we buy the stuff that we don't like to please the people we don't even like with money we don't even have? Why? Because we're constantly coming, oh, well, Jones has that, Mr. Kim has that, Mr. Park has that, Elder Kim has that. Well, I need to upgrade my car. Sin of comparison. It's how Satan at the Garden of Eden start tricking Eve by saying, you could be like God, right? <laughs> Ultimately, the fourth layer is sin of pride. Yeah. I am like God. I could be like God, right? The comparison jumps, and then when you have self, false ego, to, yeah, instead of mercy of God, instead of being in presence of God in awe and in fear, and wow, you know, this is God. No, you know, I, I want to do things on my own. I could be, you know, uh, captain of my ship. You know, I could carry on with just doing my own thing. Well, pride is a spiritual cancer. You know, I always say that, and I always said that, until I found out that C.S. Lewis said it first. Ah, it's not like it's something profound. <laughs> pride is a spiritual cancer. But because he's published first and everybody knows, oh, that's C.S. Lewis' quote. I said, no, I said it. No, C.S. Lewis said it first. I don't care. I didn't read his book. I just, I know that pride is a spiritual cancer, man. And don't compare my statement with C.S. Lewis. I said it. Because I know it. I don't have to believe it. You know, I believe pride is a spiritual. No, I don't believe it's, it is. Right? Pride is the spiritual cancer. When you have cancer, it's going to show up. Right? It's going to show up. And guess what happens? That's the end result. Bam! Wow. Wowza! <laughs> he dies. Then Ananias, Mr. God is gracious, the Holy One, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. Wow, scary. So Holy Spirit, God, teach us today not to have self-image that's not from you, self that will not lie about who we are. And God, as when this pandemic began, March last year, you have asked us to pray for, repent from the self-reliance and mercy of God. 
I pray that today, to all those brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters who's listening in today, this morning, that have mercy of God upon us today, Lord God. They will fear you and will not self-rely on us and will not compete and compare with others or even with you, thinking that we can be like God. We are God. We are the captain of our soul. And we are, we're going to decide. We're going to do whatever I want to do. God, help us. Set us free, Father, from this nonsense. And keep us, Lord, pure today. <clears throat> that we will be victorious. And have revival today in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. I'll see you tomorrow morning.